And while everyone else is busy wasting the fast dwindling screen time of this show, Sage and Snapdragon are having a moment. So, after hours of just relentlessly bashing this travesty, how about some actual positivity for a change? <laughs> I know. And no, I'm not memeing here, I'm not being facetious, I am 100% sincere. I'll just allow this scene to play out in its entirety, and then comment after, to get you in the right state of mind. Try to imagine this out of context to the best of your ability, ignore all that we know about the blueberry and the carrot, the fact that they are both awful characters, and even worse people. Try to view this scene as if this was someone pitching the show to you. A sneak peek at their vision, a taste of things to come, as it were. You have no idea what High Guardian Spice is, but you are open to new experiences. Everybody on board? Everyone comfy? Alright, let's watch. <sighs> we used to balance each other out, like... I calm Rose's manic energy, and she left me out of my anxiety. But lately, she's been so restless. She called me boring. You are not boring. You have this history with her. She thinks you're the same as you used to be, but you aren't. I'm aren't. Not. I'm not. We used to have so much fun together, but now, I don't know, it's confusing. You, uh, sure do have a lot of feelings about Rosemary. <laughs> of course I do. She's my best friend. Don't you have a lot of feelings about Amaryllis? No. She's my best friend, and she's kind. Is she? <laughs> well, let me correct that. She can be kind. To me. When I imagine her in my head, she's always plowing through crowds with her elbows pointed out, shouting, That's not my problem! <laughs> so, yeah, no confusing feelings there. We've got more of a father-daughter relationship. Who's who in that scenario? Oh, uh, I have no idea. On top of everything, my parents forbid me from using new magic. And that's impossible around here. Rose doesn't get it. Oh, I understand being at odds with your folks. But think about it. All this weird heartache. I mean, I don't know. Amaryllis has this weird crush on Hickory that she keeps denying, but it doesn't bother me. Could you maybe have a crush on Rosemary? What? Just consider it. You talk about her a lot. Of course I don't. We're just really good friends. I could never think of Rose that way. We don't have to talk about it. Um, do you want to hear a story about the time my brother May just shoved me in front of a charging centaur to impress my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Again, in a void, ignoring all that we know about the story, completely removed from the context of the show it exists in, I honestly think that this is the best scene in the entire show. It's not fantastic dialogue, it's barely decent, half the lines are painfully exposition-y, topics are just thrown around and ignored, it's all fairly surface level stuff, but damn it, I'm trying to be nice here. It still manages to be far beyond anything else on offer. It's two full minutes of a pair of characters just talking, bonding, it's calm, no stupid jokes, there's even something that resembles actual wit. Good humor drifting between pals, the scene manages to build an atmosphere of serenity, no one screams or whines or says something monumentally brain-meltingly stupid. Even the little thing with the raindrops coming together, while being corny, is still rather cute. Like, oh, you tried, you actually tried. I just wanna pinch the director for being such a sweetheart and managing to drip out a speck of genuine vision onto the screen. If you showed this scene to someone who had never even heard about the rest of the spice, I bet they would at worst shrug indifferently. Or think of it like this. 
Imagine if this two minute stretch was the worst that the show had to offer. At that point, we would probably have a, if not outright good, then at least inoffensive animated show on our hands. And this is not even the only decent part of the episode. Time has a flashback about her father, and while the conversation is nothing exciting, it's also not utterly puke-inducing. It's basic and played out, if anything. Time had a good relationship with her father, despite being a somewhat rambunctious teen with the whole yeah yeah, responsibilities are boring, let me shoot things routine. If one wishes to read into it, Time probably regrets not appreciating her time with her father to the extent that she should have, and that in turn feeds into her pseudo-obsession about helping him. You can't see it, but I'm shrugging as hard as I can. Bottom line, this should have been the entirety of episode 10, instead of wasting time with the idiotic demon phone call, or chasing after silly phantoms, the episode should have been a calm collection of vignettes, the cast just talking, reflecting upon their experiences, having flashbacks, and fleshing them out. All of them show how Amaryllis and Snap met, tell us why we should care about their bond. Some throwaway line about a lizard is nothing. The fact that the writers pretend like it's something is insulting in itself. Show us that moment. Why does it matter? How does Amaryllis gravitate towards that memory so much, enough so that she shares it willingly? The entire cast of characters are lacking any kind of dimensions. Ten episodes, and we know next to nothing about them. Huh, apologizing to Sage is rough. She's so perfect. She puts up with a lot from her folks. Show us. What exactly does that mean? What is Sage's family life actually like? Without context, that statement is meaningless. The level of zero fucks given is actually disgusting. If you don't care to flesh out your cast, don't expect anyone to give a crap about them. All of these rainy day memories should have been bursting with meaning and revelations showcase new sides of the characters we never even considered before, the possibilities are literally endless. You could even use the stupid memory spell as the plot device if you absolutely must have it. Force the characters to face the pain from their past, confront their own flaws, accept that they have to improve if they are ever to become guardians, whatever the hell that actually means. And by the by, since the budget is allegedly the cause of every single problem in the show, you know what's real cheap? Having the character sit still and talk. So how about fixing two issues at once and saving your money by elevating the cast of caricatures into actual characters? But instead, the show regurgitates the same sludge for the umpteenth time. The final memory phantom depicts Rosemary crying her eyes out because of her mummy. Because the main heroine truly has nothing else going for her. Why would you leave? <laughs> Rosemary, is that the day your mom left? That statement makes no sense. There is no way Rosemary reacted this way the day her mother left. She is a guardian, so she must have been away often on missions and such. She even told Rosemary beforehand that she was going to leave. The line Sage is going for was, Is that the day you realized your mother isn't coming back? And that is a horrendous sentence, but that is the actual factual information that should have been brought forth. Or just don't. Just shut the fuck up and stop asking retarded questions with obvious answers. And furthermore, how absolutely sickening is it that the thing that finally brings Sage to the point of wanting to make peace with Rosemary is the reminder that, oh, right, she has a missing family member, please be sad. What message is anyone supposed to gather from this? 
be angry, act the part of the victim until the other party pulls out a more powerful victim card. Fuck off, show. Just fuck off to the deepest depths of hell. Sage should have sought out Rosemary right after having her talk with Snap. She called Rosemary her best friend casually even after all the horrible things she supposedly said and did. At that point, anyone ought to realize that the spat is completely ridiculous and just go and fix it. <laughs> is, is mom coming back? I'm on it, kiddo. I'll keep you posted, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly are you on it? You've done absolutely nothing to find your mom. Do you think that when you become a guardian you are just magically going to stumble into her? What is your plan exactly? This is the first time I've seen a fictional character literally lie to themselves. Anyway, a full episode later, after nothing has changed between them, after nothing meaningful has been said to either of them to change their perspective, after the script says that we are indeed at the end of the episode, now the girls finally make up. Both of them are sorry for being dumb, neither of them will aspire to be less dumb in the future, so that's... that's just on character at this point. I'd like to place a special emphasis on this line in particular. This absolute not excuse at all excuse Sage offers for her Omega Cunt act. I didn't mean to explode at you the other day. Everything in here, it's just anxious and chaos almost always. That sounds awful. Keep this scene in mind. I'm not done with it yet. As a bonus round of limp peacemaking, Amaryllis and Snap are back to being mates as well. Are you... are you mad at me? Mad? No. But you don't have to be mean all the time. Maybe scale it back a few degrees. I am who I am. Like you. I cannot fathom the logic here. Snap has apparently been okay with Amaryllis being as vile as she wants for all her life. This is my old revenge diary. I started it when I was two and a half. But now suddenly Snap finds that objectionable? Hmm. His strange change of heart oddly began around the same time he started hovering around Sage. Eh, could be a coincidence. Just something to ponder about the utter lack of morals, standards, or just all-around spine deficiency on display. Also, Snap himself has not once apologized for being Amaryllis' accomplice. So the whole thing reeks of projection. And Amaryllis never actually utters an apology either. Nor does she promise to be less mean in the future. Because she is who she is. Wonderful. Just wonderful. What a meaningful way to cap off this afternoon of nonsense. Just when I think that I've seen every trick there is, episode 10 somehow manages to find yet another way to annoy me. The fact that the show flirts with the idea of not being horrendous all the time only serves to highlight its problems even further. Now to be clear, a single scene is not enough to save an episode, or to turn it into anything acceptable. I still think the first episode is the least offensive of the bunch, even though it's pointless filler that does nothing with the cast and ruins the world building in one fell swoop. It's just that each episode after that is progressively even worse. As for episode 10, its biggest sin is once again underlying just how worthless the cast of characters are. Charmless, selfish, selectively incompetent, idiotic, whiny. And if you were hoping for character growth, then you are not only left wanting, but the show even walks back on previous development. Amongst all the inconsistencies of this show, 
The one thing we can rely on is that the cast will be insufferable, barring those brief moments on the windowsill and the like. I guess this is simply probabilities doing their thing. Even a broken clock is correct two times a day. Now that we've seen the best the show has to offer, in a way, it's time to tackle the absolute worst. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.